Thank you everybody for joining who's already on. We're gonna start at about 3.03 to give folks some time to jump on. Please um, continue to feel free to stay off of your video cameras. Um, and if you'd like to, you are more than welcome to pop off. Um, and at any point, if you have any questions, you can jump off of mute and ask them or enter them into the chat box, whatever your comfort is. So like I said, we'll get started at about 3.03 .03 to give some folks a little bit more time to jump on. Alrighty, everybody, it is 3.03, .03, so anybody who um, is going to be on, hopefully we'll be able to jump in. Um, but just a quick overview of what we're going to discuss today. We're gonna go over the timeline of the Teacher and Leader of the Year application, a little bit of the vision and why uh, we are doing this award program and what we hope to achieve from it. I'm gonna go in depth into the online application um, and really focus on some of the technical things that might trip somebody up if they're not accustomed to using a portal like that um, or some tricks of the trade from our pre-K-12 folks. Um, I will briefly review the application um, support and resources, the guidance documents that have been discussed in previous um, webinars, but we do have those resources in this uh, slide deck as well. And then we'll finish up with some dates and deadlines. And again, as I mentioned, for those of you who were on a little bit early, if at any point you have any questions or um, a concern, please feel free to pop off of mute and enter your question in the chat box. We do have a pretty small group, so this can feel a lot more conversational than if we had about 40 or 50 people in. So the vision of Teacher and Leader of the Year, as um, you've seen or hopefully seen in our um, newly released beliefs that the Department of Education has. 
our main one that we're focusing on today is that educators are value professionals. And we want to make sure at the early childhood strategy team that our early childhood educators know that they are included in this group. Uh, the vision is that this is going to help prepare and support teachers to lead classrooms and provide high quality interactions, not just from people who are already doing it, but taking you leaders and teachers um, as resources as you're sharing with us what you're doing in your wonderful classrooms to be able to share your videos to be able to use you as examples of what is going on in our state for our earliest learners. And this is one of our favorite slides in uh, the early childhood strategy team. And many of you on the call already know this, but the most important years of development for a child's brain are those first five years. That is where 90% of their brain development and growth happens. And it's shaped by the education that they get in their early child care centers or their, um, you know, the education that they're getting with you all and your leaders and your teachers. So. Um, it is high time, in my opinion, that we start celebrating you all in the same way as we do our um, upper or you know higher age levels of teachers. So, just a, you know, again, a vision of what this will look like. We are going to mirror the pre-K twelve application um, and review process as closely as possible, as far as dates go, as far as like what you guys are expected to be submitting, um, and we at the department will evaluate applicants um, throughout the process. There are gonna be different rounds throughout um, the next few months, which I'll talk about in a little bit, where you will have to submit additional documents where you might interview with somebody at the department um, and award winners will um, receive valuable prizes to acknowledge their contributions. I cannot reveal what those are yet, but you will learn them soon. And, um, Again, all of this, as I mentioned, is to truly elevate the field of early childhood education. Every single applicant here is groundbreaking. Every single person who is considering submitting an application for this is bringing our field um, of early childhood education up in um, you know, the world of profession. We have um, heard over the last year and a half because of COVID how uh, you know, impactful early childhood education is for the families who need to be working for the children um, who may or may not have lost time in classrooms because of COVID-19. So this is the first of many steps to ensure that that conversation does not end um, with the pandemic, that it continues to um, shift and blossom and grow so that you are um, recognized for the amazing impact you have on our communities. So the people who are eligible for this award are people or teachers and leaders who are in type three centers, early Head Start or Head Start centers, or family child care providers who are participating in the FCC pilot. If you or someone you know is not sure whether you meet uh, the criteria to fit into those categories, please certainly reach out to me. I'm actually gonna type my email into the chat box now so that you can have it. And if you want to draft an email at any point during this webinar, you may do so. Um, or if you want to email me during it, you are welcome to do that too. Um, but our you know, qualities that we're looking for are demonstrating excellence in the field by having really great class scores and by showing those skills in a teaching video by being not just a, um, you know, a person who shows up to work every day, but a person who shows up to work every day and builds the culture of the community, of the classroom, of the center. Um, and being a real you know, shining light for your children and your staff. So the timeline of this, on December 1st, our online application went live. So some people have already started their drafts of applications. Yesterday and today, we posted webinars to help you with the application process itself. January 12th is when those online applications will close. January 12th through April is when we're going to have different rounds of an evaluation or review process for applicants um, and candidates who are a part of that session. You will be receiving more, or, yeah, a part of that um, section of the timeline. You'll be receiving information on that as the time comes. And then our winners will be announced in uh, the May, July timeframe um, at Teacher Leader Summit and ultimately at the end of year Teacher of the Year Gala. All right, so now we're gonna dive into the online application. 
Um, I'm going to drop into the chat box now. Again, so you can follow along with me the online application page and the Louisiana Beliefs Awards page. These are also linked on the slide pages. So when I do send these out to um, participants, or when I put these available on the Louisiana Believes Awards page, you can access those links there as well as you know, being there already. So the online application um, will require you to sign up um, by creating an account. Now on the off chance that you were in a pre-K 12 classroom last year um, or in previous years, you may already have an account with an email address, but it is 99.9% .9 more likely that you're gonna need to click this sign up button right here when you get to that online application. So this is just going to prompt you to create a profile um, to be able to access the application. It's asking for basic contact information and that information is going to be used one, to you know, understand what part of the state you're coming from, but two, also to create um, or establish any communication uh, that we need in order to send you an invitation to the gala if you are a finalist or to you know, give you a call if we need to interview you or send you an email if something is missing in your application and we would like you to submit it all before a certain time frame, et cetera. That's what this will be used for. So once you complete that, you'll save your profile and you'll click this get started button here. This information here shows you that once you've started a draft, it's gonna give you, um, you know, notifications in either gray, blue or red, depending on where you are in your application draft. Um, but this get started button is what you're gonna to need to get to. Now, at any point after you've clicked that get started and you scroll to the bottom of your page, you're gonna see these three buttons, save as draft, mark complete and close. You can say, open up an application today, save it, and go back to it every single day between now and January 12th. And it will not be submitted until you click that mark complete button. It will also take you to a next page to say, are you sure you wanna submit? And you'll say, yes, I'm sure. And that will be the end. So I want you all to definitely know that this is not something that you should just sit down and do in 30 minutes. This is definitely gonna take some time and it is okay to come back to it after you have um, you know, started your initial so at the beginning of the application, once you, you know, like I said, click that get started button, you're going to see the first prompt, which is for which award do you wish to apply? Are you a teacher of the year or are you a leader of the year? It is really important to make sure that you are clicking that first and clicking the correct one because that will generate questions that are relevant to your application. So if for some reason you forget to click that or if you um, click the wrong one, you're gonna see a slightly different application set of questions. Um, and it might compromise your application if you, you know, are missing some questions and we don't want that. Um, so definitely, definitely make sure you've got the right thing clicked here. So here's a little bit more of what the application looks like. This is going to um, give you an overview of all of the things that you need. You see a checklist down here for what is um, available. This is also all available in our guidance documents on the Louisiana Beliefs Awards page, um, but you're gonna be seeing it multiple times throughout your application process. So, you know, there's really no reason why you should be missing a uh, document or not able to submit something since it is really clear what we're looking for at every stage. So um, the application, as I mentioned, is gonna require you to do a whole bunch of different things from setting up your profile to uploading some documents to answering some questions, you know, directly into the application. But um, one thing I do want to take a quick pause on for technical assistance is that uploading of the video. This can be one of the things that is a little bit more difficult since videos do have a lot more or require a lot more bandwidth or thinking space from your computers. Sometimes your internet connection may or may not be um, fast enough to upload an entire video. And since it is supposed to be a 10 minute long video, it will be a pretty substantial file size. So one thing that we have seen in the past um, you know, you can always upload and, uh, you know, drag and drop your file from your files on your computer. And if you're able to do that, that's great. But if not, another option is to upload it to YouTube. So I have a couple of screenshots here at the bottom where once you get into, if you just go to youtube.com, you go over to the far right button beside where you're searching, click that little camera with the plus sign in it, 
When you do, it'll turn black and you'll see an option to upload a video. You may be prompted to create a um, YouTube profile. Um, some of you may already have one, some of you may not. The steps are pretty simple. It's just using a email, a password, giving some, you know, your name and information so that you can, again, upload your video to YouTube. The last thing I'll say about that is making sure that you list your video once it's uploaded as public so that anybody um, at the department can see it. And then you will copy and paste the URL link into this text box here. And that's how we'll be able to see your video. Um, the next important thing for technical assistance is your consent forms. So um, this is a little less straightforward than just a simple upload sometimes for if you have many children in your classroom, many um, adult teachers in your video, uh, we need to have consent forms for anybody and everybody who is in the video, whether it's you or coworkers or children. Obviously the little, little children cannot sign for themselves. So you're, you can have their family sign on their behalf. Um, but this could be depending on the size of the, or the number of people in your video, you might have um, quite a few uh, that you need to submit. So instead of submitting individual files, it is our recommendation that you scan them all together and combine them into one PDF file and upload um, that here for your, um, for your application. If you need assistance with that, or if you're not sure how to do that, um, I would recommend contacting one of your, your teaching coaches, somebody from your CCRNR, or you can also contact me and I can, I'd be more than happy to assist as I can from Baton Rouge. Um, if you do need to upload them individually, that can work too. It just, again, might be um, troublesome. You might miss one. You might not, you know, your computer might get mad at you as we know in the technology world of COVID that sometimes the computers don't like to behave as we would like them to. So that's just another um, way to hopefully simplify that process. So really quick, I'm just going to open up the application itself just to give you guys a little bit of um, what you will be seeing. I'm just making sure that you can see my screen. So I've pretended to be a teacher of the year applicant. I completed my profile as you can see here, and then I can jump into my application. As you can see, I created it on November 30th. It is December 15th. So I um, will click into that and get back into my application. It's gonna say action required because I haven't fully submitted it yet. And I'm gonna click open here. Let's see if I can move my screen a little bit. All right, let's see. I think this should be more visible, hopefully. Um, oops. All righty. So, um, like I showed you before, this is the list of all the information that you might need in order to um, upload your application. The link to the awards page resource library is also here, so you can, you know, there, we've set it up so that you can constantly go back to the resources that you might need. You're gonna, again, complete your basic information, your professional bio, you're gonna have, um, you know, say the community network, the childcare center where you work or the Head Start Center, et cetera. Um, any information from the childcare center or, you know, your place of work um, that you'd like to upload. These are all just, again, straightforward questions that, um, are asking you about you know, your professional background. Um, and then you'll get into where you're gonna be uploading the things that you need, such as um, your lesson plan with feedback, scores from your class examples. Um, I used a, <laughs> just a PDF from something that I was working on to upload here to show y'all how to do that. But um, if I wanted to just upload something here, I'd click select file. It take me to my um, to my uh, documents and my files. I would click what I wanted to upload, click open, and it'll appear there. So then again, you're going through more of your submission materials. If you uploaded something by mistake, like I did, say, "Oh my gosh, I didn't mean to upload the PDF about you know explaining what it means to experience homelessness. I meant to upload my resume." 
you can easily remove those as well. Um, so that is what this looks like. Um, and then again, at the very bottom, you could see that I could save it as a draft. I can mark it as complete. I'm not going to for now because I did not complete it. Um, but that is the application. Before I move on to the actual documents um, that we need, does anybody have any questions about the uh, about the online application since we are a small group and you can pop off of mute? Hi, my name is April. Um, I just have a question. So yeah. I'm actually helping someone facilitate their application. Awesome. So um, that, just to confirm, I should still create, we should create a profile with her contact information yes. and mm -hmm. then, but it's okay that both of us access it if we're helping. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I highly recommend um, doing that. Actually, somebody asked that question in our other webinar, whether or not it should be your like your mentor applying for you or you applying yourself. And it should be that teacher, that applicant, the person who we think is potentially the teacher of the year, that should be all of their information, but you are more than welcome to help and support any teacher or any leader in submitting their application. Um, and again, if there's any technical assistance that's needed, please definitely reach out to me too. Um, but I'm really glad to hear that you're helping somebody and that they have a, an advocate on the ground with them. So I'll just quickly go over the application materials. I, um, again, have had a webinar that's specifically going over all of these that's available on the awards page already, um, but I'll just briefly review them. So both teacher and leader of the year are required to submit a video. The teacher um, is a 10 minute maximum video of the teacher's instruction. I've showed you how um, to potentially upload those uh, videos and making sure that things are clear, making sure that things are, you know, the children are able to be heard, et cetera. I highly recommend watching the video before you submit it to us. Um, back in my teaching days, I had a few times where I did not rewatch the videos that I submitted to like my mentor or my coach. And I thought, oh, you could not hear anything I was saying. That was a bit of a waste of time or thinking like, oh my gosh, my ears are bleeding because the sound is too loud. So definitely take a second to review that. Um, you also have other teaching materials, work history, submitting your resume, adding um, a video tour of your classroom if you'd like, family letters of recommendation, um, and support for all of these documents like an example of a family letter of recommendation or questions to ask a family um, are in our appendixes that are on the awards page. And teaching data, we will pull at the department, we'll pull this class course for that teacher. But if you have an integrator reliability certificate, you can upload that as well. And then um, the essay questions. There are four essay questions we ask you to answer, three of the four, uh, but you can respond to them in two ways. There, the uh, scheduled interview for Zoom window has closed since this slide was created. So either you can video record yourself speaking your responses or you can do a written response. Either way, whatever is um, more uh, akin to your spirit and whatever way is easier for you to upload. And those, oh, excuse me, those three questions are, why do you wanna work in early childhood? Imagine meeting the parents of their first toddler, what would you say to them? Um, who, you know, about, aren't they unsure about starting childcare? What makes you an excellent educator? And what, what do policymakers need to know about uh, the work that you're doing? So the leader of the year, as I've mentioned before, it mirrors very similarly. However, um, the options for a video include teaching. However, they also include professional development and staff meetings that you as the leader are facilitating or leading. And um, in the appendix, it shows the distinction between the two um, and what we would require from you if you are doing either of those things. Again, additional submission materials to support your application. You can submit at least one of both of the, you know, these two bulleted lists. You can submit as many as you'd like um, beyond that, but at least one. Then your work history, completing both. Um, and then again, the class scores for the teachers at that site. 
and your teacher inter-rater reliability. Again, the leadership questions, they are similar, the, the same um, parameters, but slightly different questions. So three of the four, you can uh, submit those answers either via video or via um, written response. Um, and making sure that they uh, reflect who you are as an adult, or not an adult, a leader, <laughs> excuse me. Um, so applications, um, you can receive technical assistance from me or uh, some folks at the other levels of support for teachers and leaders, such as your CCRNRs, your lead agencies, folks who are in your community who might be able to go in and videotape your classroom during um, a teaching session or um, attend the optional office hours that we had today. So, um, and back in October. We will likely not, this will probably be the last um, informational session that we have because of the holidays, um, but you are able to email me for anything that you need support with um, between now and the application closure. Uh, so as I mentioned before, I just wanna reiterate the importance of those consent forms. I don't want anybody's application to be compromised because of um, not completing these accurately or not submitting them at all. Uh, because it is really important for us to protect the privacy of our children and of the teachers or leaders who are um, applying. And we want to make sure that we're able to use these, like I said, at Teacher Leader Summit to show what amazing work our early childhood educators are doing. Um, and we can't do that if um, we're not allowed to use your videos because we compromise the, you know, the privacy of a child. So really make sure that you're doing that. Um, it's not just for for your application, but it's for the betterment of the field. The more people can see the great work that you're doing, um, the more excitement and conversation we can have around it. So, and also everybody loves to see videos of precious children doing precious things. So make sure you do that. <laughs> um, alrighty, and uh, the application guidance, as I've mentioned before, all four of these uh, links are can be found on the awards page. Um, under the Early Childhood Teacher and Leader of the Year resources. So lastly, the upcoming dates, December 1st, again, was when the online application went live. January 12th is the application deadline. January 13th is when the department will start reviewing applications. And by mid-February, applicants will be notified of next steps. So there will be a little bit of a waiting period, but you will know that your application has been received once you officially submit it. There will be some correspondence between um, in that late January time, whether your application um, might need uh, an amendment if there is something simple missing or if there is something that is unopenable for whatever reason, you may be reached out to um, in that way. And of course, as I've mentioned, hopefully a thousand times to the point where you feel really comfortable doing it, please, please, please reach out to me at any point during the application process if you are not sure of something or if you need help with something or if you would like clarification on something. Um, I am so excited to hopefully see a robust applicant pool. I think last time I checked, we had a, a little uh, close to 20 applications so far. I would love to have at least one, if not more representative from every parish. Um, so if you are supporting a teacher or many teachers, please, 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 um, iterate to them how excited we are at the department that they are considering applying and hopefully fulfilling their applying process. And, um, you know, definitely encourage them to, you know, feel confident in completing that application. So this is the last slide I have. Um, I would love to hear any questions, concerns, or thoughts from the folks who are on today, if you do have any questions or concerns. Alrighty, I'm not hearing any. So I'm gonna stay on for just a few more minutes in case somebody's feeling shy and wants to wait until it's just me and you. Um, but you are more than welcome to hop off. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday and that you and the teacher that you're supporting or the leader that you're supporting have a really great application process and that everybody has a really great holiday season. Thank you so much for joining today.